This young man has a fascinating story to tell. Since he was a child, he was dreaming to become a racing driver. Not having the necessary budget, he started figure skating instead. He was very good in it, but a terrible injury ended his career. He found new motivation in esports racing and founded Sim to Real, giving young talents the chance to start their racing careers through esports racing. He entered World EX as a wild card driver and is now a full time driver for Patrick Long Esports. Say hello to a very special personality, Henry Drury. So, welcome to the second. Uh, biz talk and last time the first time we had Matthias Ekstrem obviously professional racing driver very famous winning DTM being the fastest Audi in the Dakar rally with an electric drive and today this time in biz talk 02 quite a different person but a very very interesting person as well it's Henry Drury who was born in Great Britain but now he's living in America Henry welcome to our biz talk thank you for having me yeah. So, Henry, maybe you could describe yourself a little bit. What are you doing? What are you doing? And what is your business? What yeah, are you doing for your yeah, foreign life? Well, I mean, primarily, you've, you've set me up for failure here because following on from Matthias is um, a bit of a hard act to follow. Um, <laughs> so I'll, I'll do my best. Um, so, yeah, I am a... Um, semi-professional racing driver depending on how you define it um outside of that um i work primarily in the ev and, and motorsports sector um doing all sorts of consulting work effectively so everything from esports to marketing to business development so okay. that's that's where most of my time is spent yeah um i i just told you we were born in, in great britain but now you're living in, in the us and where are you at the moment where are you based uh, I'm based just in uh, just north of Tampa, Florida, so okay. quite a change from the UK. Yeah, not too bad. How's the weather at the moment? Uh, stormy, bloody stormy. stormy. Okay, it's okay. we've been under tornado watch for the past oh, six oh, hours. Oh. So, <laughs> so be careful, please. <laughs> uh, very yeah. different to, to back yeah. home. Yeah, the one of your business we see many logos here behind you. So some of them, or most of them, you are working with very closely. And one is STR, the thing that's a comp or, or a program created by yourself. What is STR? So STR is a company that I started back in 2019. Um, it, I suppose I have to go back a little bit further to, to explain. I first started racing in 2019. Um, I made the jump from the virtual world in esports to the real world on the road to Indy. Um, and I began racing at the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. And as soon as I started racing in the real world, I couldn't help but notice the disparity between the real world and the virtual world. And how as soon as I got there, I was immediately on the back foot over people who were paying more money and people who had more practice time and more coaching. And it was just such... A strange thing to see having come from esports where you know you have people of every gender every age every socioeconomic background all competing on on what's effectively a very fair platform um and i realized that you know there has to be a more equitable and, and fairer way to access motorsports for people who maybe aren't as privileged you know to to grow up with access to karting 365 days a year so SDR, which is Sim to Real, is a company that I started with the vision of eventually building a, an FIA accredited esports platform to allow people who maybe don't have access to the funding to go and get on track in karting or F4 to build up and learn those same skills in an esports environment. Um, and it is, it is possible. I mean, I am the evidence really in the fact that I could never afford to race. I could never afford to cart. I learned everything that I learned on a sim. Um, and then when you jump across to the real world, it is directly transferable. So for fifteen hundred dollars at most, that's sort of on the on the top end of the scale. We can get almost anybody into esports where they can train and learn those same skills to then one day put into into a real world race car and ideally a real world career. 
Yeah, very, very interesting, this program. So we're looking forward to see the progress of, of this. And I think that's what the reason why we got in touch initially one year ago, you and me and World DX, because World DX is mixing the virtual world with the real world as well, with real world racing drivers and esports racers. Can you remember how we got in touch? I can. So um, while half of STR is, is based around building that platform, the other half of it is based around promoting and supporting real world series, uh, ideally to then have a part in that platform. So we have been promoting the ERA championship, which is an electric Formula 4 championship uh, based in Zonhoven, Belgium. And I got in touch with, I think it was Mike, early last year, just to make the connection, because I mean, I'd heard about what you guys were doing with World EX and from being in the R Factor 2 sphere, I'd seen all this stuff about this new car. Um, so I got in touch just to make the connection. And Mike said, well, you know, yeah, let's let's get one of your, your ERA drivers into World EX. The only problem being we didn't have any drivers at the time. <laughs> so it was sort of, I'm, I mean, I'll, I'll do, I'll give it a go. <laughs> so um, yeah, he invited me to take part as a wild card in the Sebring race Sebring. last year. Yeah. Uh, I immediately crashed into three <laughs> F1 drivers and a Le Mans 24-hour winner in the first corner. Um, and somehow I got invited back. So I, I don't really know don't really know what happened there. But yeah, I've been, been involved ever since. Yeah. You mentioned the ERA Championship, which is starting this year, going active um, together with the, with the ETCR, with the touring cars, the electric touring cars. And um, what is your involvement in this series now? So um, I've been working as a consultant, so I'm not technically a, a part of the company. I can't take much of the credit, but um, I help with promotion over here in the US and, and bringing some US drivers over to the series. Um, so not, I don't get to do much at HQ, as unfortunately when we started working together, COVID happened. So. Mm. I haven't been able to go back to Belgium to HQ for one of our, our famous Belgian Waffle Fridays. But um, yeah, so we're launching this year. We were just able to announce um, that we'll be supporting the FIA ETCR Championship. So that's big news for us. Um, and yeah, we our first race is May the 17th. Yeah. So sing, excited to get going. Sing, sing in Istanbul and in, in, in Turkey. Uh, interesting circuit. Yes. Yeah, yeah. There's also one. Yeah, we got young, some interesting ones. Yeah, that's a young American guy, Alice Piesia. He just launched an, an own team. He got also a connection with us with World DX. So maybe we'll, mm -hmm. we will have him also here in the Biz Talk next time. And yeah, we, we are following a bit what he's doing. He's, yeah, he has some, some quite good ideas and interesting background, interesting family pushing a lot. So we really like to support young people. When I was very, very young, I got into motor racing when I was, I think, 15 or 16, becoming a journalist. So, and yeah, it's, I think it's really, really nice if young people have a spirit and have an interest for something, are really pushing for it and, and living their dreams. That's really something I really always like to support. And you are still also very, very young, despite really when I read your story and it's really crazy what, what you have already experienced and what we have been, been through, maybe you Tell our viewers a little bit uh, where you come from or what happened, because it's an incredible story. Because you were very young, you want to become a racing driver, then you get into ice skating, and then something bad happens there. Yeah, it's um, it, it's been a bit of an up and down journey so far. <laughs> so um, yeah, I mean, I've I've always wanted to be a racing driver. I mean, I can remember being five, six years old. You know, it was all I could think about, you know, my family and I would watch the Grand Prix on Sundays. Um, and, you know, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with my life. I wanted to drive in squiggly circles. Um, unfortunately, that didn't quite work out as um, I decided to tell my parents that I had this grand dream of being a racing driver. And they said, absolutely not. <laughs> it is too expensive and it's too dangerous. Um, and then through through my sister actually who'd started figure skating um i ended up giving it a try one day and sort of fell into into figure skating um you know that became my passion and my career so um worked my way up through figure skating uh, for four or five years um i won two national championships with my sister back in back in the uk 
and then it all went wrong one day. Um, <laughs> so in 2014, um, my sister and I were training. We were putting a new lift on the ice for the first time. Um, it was called a press lift. And at the time, I was simply too small to be lifting. I, I was a very small kid. Um, I was probably four foot 11. I was absolutely tiny um, and I simply shouldn't have been, I shouldn't have been lifting um, and the coaches shouldn't have had me training that particular lift. Um, but anyway, one day we go for this lift on the ice. I force my partner over my head, bend my back and I, I hear these two pops and, <laughs> and I didn't know at the time, but um, yeah, everything was, everything was about to go wrong. So I ended up rupturing the two lowest discs in my lumbar spine, um, which is an issue which I'm still dealing with today. So I, yeah, it, it was, it was a very difficult time. Um, it led to what was effectively a year of almost not being able to walk. Um, so a year effectively in bed. Um, and that took quite a severe toll on my mental health as well as my, as well as my physical health. So it's one thing they don't quite tell you as, as an athlete. I mean, you're used to injuries. You have them all the time. But when you have a big injury and a long-term one, you, you're not prepared for how that affects you going from training every day with this goal in mind. You know, the, the 2018 Olympics right here, you have a system, you have a routine. And then suddenly you're in bed and it's a struggle to get to the toilet. So it, it affects you quite badly. And it led to a few years, which were um, quite difficult, quite, quite dark. Um, and then miraculously, I discovered esports and everything was okay. So um, I ended up meeting a, a friend um, of my father's one day and, and talking about, you know, what had happened and how I still had this dream for racing. And he said, well, you, you need to try esports." Um, and I sort of said, well, you know, what, Gran Turismo? What's, what's that? Um, and he sort of gave me the rundown over what sim racing had become and, and what you could do with it. So he effectively put me on a training program. So I bought R Factor 2 and I bought the steering wheel and the pedals. And he said, I want you to go and drive a Skip Barber at Silverstone. And you're going to do as many laps as it takes until you learn how to drive. And I must have done 4,000 laps of Silverstone <laughs> before I learned how to drive a racing car properly. And mm -hmm. I learned about weight transfer and techniques. Um, but yeah, slowly got into sim racing um, and then worked my way up sort of step by step. So I would write to teams, uh, write to different R Factor 2 teams. And I'd say, look, can I, can I race with you? Can I practice with you? And they'd say no. And I'd say, can, can I just watch you? Can I learn from you? Um, and, you know, slowly worked my way up over, over a few years um, until I got to sort of the, the top tier of R Factor 2 with things like uh, the Virtual Endurance Championship and, and GPVWC and stuff like that. Um, and then I was lucky enough to make the jump to the real world um, on the road to Indy, um, which unfortunately only lasted three races. Um, but that also then gave me the inspiration and the idea for STR. Mm -hmm. So that sort of spawned that path. Um, unfortunately, after those three races in, in the road to India, I ran out of budget. Um, and, you know, ever since I've been focused on building STR and, and working on how to give underprivileged people and minorities and those without the access to racing access to that platform. Um, and, you know, working on, on building my brand and sharing my story mm -hmm. with my injury and hopefully reaching more people with injuries like that through racing. So yeah, very, that's where we're up to. Very impressive story and cool that you you were able to fight back after this really difficult times and also with the help of esports racing. You're still also looking a bit, of course, with ERA, but also with other things in the real racing world. I think the last thing you did in real was helping out in, or helping a team in Pikes Peak with the, with the Tesla, with the electric drive. And I read somewhere you, you had plans to, re, to be return to the Pikes Peak, maybe even as a driver. What's about that? Yes. Well, uh, funny <laughs> you should ask that because I actually got that call, that phone call yesterday. Um, unfortunately, I'm not driving this year. Okay. Um, 
but we will be returning to Pikes Peak with a Tesla Model S Plaid mm -hmm. um, going for the production car world record again. Um, so race date is June 23rd? Oh no, 27th. Yeah. But the plan is definitely to return and then I'm working on plans of my own to, to race for 2023. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, okay. And of course, in the real racing world, you've got also now, maybe thanks to WorldX, a link to Patrick Long, who has been a really, really successful racing driver. And he's very well known in America and he's very much addicted to Porsche and yeah, has a long history with Porsche. And now you're a, a driver for Patrick Long Esports and also helping the team in promotion and PR and whatever. So how did you connect to Patrick and Jeff? Well, um, I mean, I've never heard of this Patrick Long bloke. I, I don't know who he is. They say he drives race cars or something, but never heard of him. <laughs> um, so I was lucky enough to be invited back to compete in the World EX um, for the Estoril round last year. Mm -hmm. um, and I jumped at the chance as Sebring had been so much fun, even if I'd spent most of it crashing into people. <laughs> um, and so I was, I was thinking, right, well, I've got to do this. This is, you know, a great opportunity, all these massive names, this, this great car, and it's so much fun. The only problem being I wasn't actually at home. So here I'm in Tampa, Florida, but my father was living in Costa Mesa, California at the time. Um, and I was out there helping him out as he was having a little bit of treatment um, in hospital. So I'm in California. I can't get home in time for the race. And I'm thinking, right. What, what do I do here? So I started rapidly, you know, looking around and calling people and trying to find if there was a simulator somewhere in Los Angeles mm -hmm. that I could use. Um, and I ended up calling an old connection of mine from the, it was from an, an EV expo called Fully Charged North America. Mm -hmm. And he worked at Porsche, uh, the Porsche Experience Center. So I called him and I said, you know, I know this is a long shot, but I know you have some simulators could you could you know maybe introduce me um and he did and i had a few calls with with the porsche experience center of los angeles guys and they were generous generous enough to offer me um the simulator to use for the race so i got to to compete in round six from the experience center and we created some cool content around that um and it's it's a truly astonishing facility um it blows me away every time i walk in there It was so strange to walk in to drive in in a sim race and to walk past you know 917s mm -hmm. and gt2 rs's and you just feel so out of your depth you're walking in past these incredible people and they're like oh what are you here for i'm just going to go play <laughs> some, some some simulators for a bit um but yeah they were incredibly generous and, and they allowed me to use the simulator um And after the race, I got a message from Jeff who had said that um, he'd heard about he'd heard about what we were doing with the Porsche as they work with the Experience Center quite closely. And what I like to drive for, for Patrick Long in the next race, as Gabby, um, who had the seat before, was unable to take part. Um, it must have gone well enough because they invited me back to do it again and again yeah. and again. Yeah. Uh, and now we're here getting ready for season two. So. Yeah, very cool. Cool story. Great to have you at World X. Um, we, we really like you and your approach and everything. So yeah, big, big, yeah, a plus to our series. Although it's some, doing some funny things like driving with the, with the goggles or putting the Mike Rockefeller picture in front of your face. So yeah, we have some funny scenes from last year. Looking forward to what you're up to yeah. in, in this season. And what you talk That's about cool. with the Porsche experience and that, I have a similar problem at the moment because the next, this race in, 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 yeah, in a couple of weeks, we have a Nürburgring virtual and on the same day, I have to be in Hockerham for the, for the DTM test. And I asked the, 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 the boss of the Porsche Experience Center in Hockenheim if I might use maybe their simulator in the evening to, <laughs> to, to race there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's see if there's an option. So if not looking, maybe there's some different sim rigs in Hockenheim having R factor because I would like to do the next race. Already a shame I missed. I missed the Daytona race because I like very much Daytona. I'm not a professional esports driver, but I was quite okay speed wise on, on Daytona. So maybe I find a way to be at Hockenheim and race in the next race. Yeah. And you, you, you should give it a try though. That's yeah, I will, I will, I will, I will. So you, you said before you like the, the EX0, the 1000 horsepower electric car. It's, I think it's, it's, quite, it's quite a beast and not easy to drive. 
Uh, what's your experience? Well, I mean, I think I think you describe it pretty perfectly there with with one thousand horsepower beast. It's um, it's the most unique car I've ever driven. I will I will put it that way. It, I have no experience racing four wheel drive cars, um, mm. and very little experience in EV race cars um, of anything like the X Zero. So. Well, I mean, I suppose there's not really much out there like the EX Zero. So mm. it's it's fascinating in that it's a whole new challenge to adapt to with the four-wheel drive system and the way that the power is delivered. It's yeah. so instantaneous. And the way that, that the way that you rotate the car is is so different. Um so it's fascinating to see the different styles that drivers use. I mean, mm. I'm I'm by far not one of the best people in this car but to look at someone like like lassa yeah. who has this incredible style through the fast speed corners where he rotates the car with just a few degrees of yaw and it's constantly rotating it's constantly mm -hmm. on that limit with the slip angle it, it's fascinating um so i definitely need to do a bit of studying and, and try and get get a bit more of a handle on the beast this year yeah. so yeah a fascinating car if anything yeah, it's definitely a challenge that what Mike and myself, we tried to create, and I think it worked pretty well. Even for the BIS series, for the non-professionals, we, re we reduced the horsepower to 800, which for likes of us, is, it's much better, definitely. But I think for the World Championship, it's good to keep the, the high power. But it's not only the high power, I think it's only the weight of the car, of course. Electric cars, of course, are pretty heavy. And so, yeah stopping the car and it's even the slipstream even the aerodynamics effect yeah quite some challenge yeah so yeah, let's see what i think happened. it's a brilliant i think it's a brilliant introduction to to evs in a way in that yeah it's the best of evs in that it is that power and that instantaneous torque yeah. and that special style of driving with the regen braking but it's also a challenge in that you know yeah. the people are worried that you know without all the shifting and, yeah. and the rev matching and and all this that you won't have so much of so much um technicality in the driving yeah. so yeah. i think it's a brilliant introduction to that yeah for me it's really fun to drive and yeah and really and and about the shifting audi just won the the abu dhabi rally with an electric drive and stefan peter hansel the, the winner he said the biggest advantage he had in the dunes was not not to shift because he instantaneous his power not shifting yeah. he could fully concentrate on driving through the dunes so and he said it's big fun. So, and I think even in the race of champions, I, I met Tom Christensen one week ago in, in Denmark. He was driving the the car for the Nitro, the electric for the uh, Nitro Rally Cross, and he said the car was really, really fun to drive. He really liked it very much. So, yeah. And so I think we will see some interesting stuff coming and in some interesting cars and yeah, more and more in motor racing. And yeah. We paved a bit the way in the virtual world. We're still quite alone there, but yeah, let's see what's what's happening. And yeah, hopefully forward. not for long. Yeah, let's see. So looking forward to season two, you will be there full time. I think it's not yet announced officially, but maybe you can say something. Um, I'm definitely <laughs> intending to. Um, yeah. I have a bit of an injury at the moment, so I'm not 100% sure that I'll be there for round one. Okay. Um, but what, what I'm happened? definitely hoping. <laughs> I competed, well, Patrick Long uh, Esports has been expanding a bit in the off season. Yeah. So we've been trying a few different sims. It's cool. um, and one of those was competing in the Daytona 24 um, on iRacing. You know, it's uh, Patrick is synonymous with endurance racing and, and these big yeah. American endurance races. So we decided to do the Daytona 24. And somehow with, with the um, positioning of my pedals, I managed to damage the cartilage in my knees. Um, <laughs> so I currently can't really push my pedals, um, but hopefully if, if I can't do round one, then I will definitely be back for round two. Um, so I'm really looking forward to it. The only, the only issue this year is that I don't have the goggles anymore. I'm using <laughs> screens. So I have to find a new way to make sure that I'm the center of attention. Good surprise. So, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure you will find ways to do that. Yeah. Well, I've got, yeah. I've got yeah. a little plan. I think, I think we're going to go with the most outrageous outfits we can find okay. for each okay. race. Cool. So <laughs> yeah. we'll find something to, to make sure I'm the center of attention again. Yeah, definitely. We have already talked for more than 15 minutes. Definitely. It's 27 I have on my watch here, but it's fine. So we ended up with some fun stuff. So we did it with Matthias as well. 
So the first one is beer or wine. Beer, but only if it's European, not American okay. beer. <laughs> okay. Sunglasses or wear our glasses? <laughs> We just talked about it. <laughs> Sunglasses, because the VR girls are so hot. Okay, yeah, yeah. Apple or Windows PC? Apple for work, Windows for racing. Same, would say the same, very good, yeah. And then three, three questions where we test your, yeah, your knowledge. What is EX in World EX standing for? Number one, eco-friendly experiments. Number two, electric experts. Or number three, electric experimental. What do you electric think? experimental. Bing, yes, one point. <laughs> Which German Formula One world champion played a role in the birth of the RCCO? Number one, Sebastian Vettel. Number two, Michael Schumacher. Or number three, Nico Rosberg. What do you think? Was it Rosberg? No, it was Michael oh. Schumacher more than 30 was years it? ago. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah. I will tell the story one day, yeah, how it happened. Yeah. When we started the slot car racing, he was involved in that. Yeah. So oh, okay. Yeah. The last question. In which year World DX co-founder Mike Rockenfeller and your team boss, Patrick Long, became teammates in the UPS Porsche Junior team? Number one, 1999. Number two, 2003 or 2010. See, I know, I know the answer to this because Mike posted <laughs> a throwback to, to that exact moment on his yeah, Instagram yeah, the other yeah, day. Yeah. <laughs> It's A or B. I want to say 2003. Yes, you're right. So pretty good. <laughs> well, you, you you behaved well. Much better okay, than yes. Matthias last time. <laughs> but of course, maybe the questions were more difficult. No, but you did it well. So it was a pleasure That's talking perfect. to you as always. So thank you very much for the time you, you spent with us. And hopefully, yeah, you will be fit to race in, in Silverstone. And, and whenever you want to come to race with us, with the organization, with our people in the, in the World DX Biz, you're always welcome because we like nice people in this championship as well. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for having me. I'm sorry for yeah. rambling on for so long. Yeah. Um, and yeah, can't, can't wait for season two. So excited to see. I've heard there's some big new things coming for our CCO. Yeah. So I'm excited. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye-bye to America. Thank you very Europe. much. Have a good time. Take care. Appreciate. Cheers. Yeah. Ciao, ciao. Thanks. Bye-bye. All right.